Four Boys and an ML Girl podcast. Thanks so much for joining me. It has been so long since I've had a chance to tape a podcast. I'm really excited about being here this morning. It's just after 11 on Thursday, the 12th of January. I cannot believe it's the 12th of January already. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm a little warm. I've had a busy morning already this morning. I dropped the boys off at school. Then I went and did some grocery shopping at um, Dominion, our local grocery store. I went to Costco, came home, unpacked, repacked the cupboards and such. So I'm, uh, I'm a little glowy this morning. The cats, of course, have come to check things out as I podcast, so you may get to see them. Um, I'd like to thank all you new viewers that subscribe to my channel over the holidays and into the new year. I really appreciate you joining us. And thanks so much to anybody who's returning for the second or third or more time. I really appreciate so much that you could take the time out of your busy day and perhaps sit down with a cup of tea or coffee and do some knitting with me. So thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I am coming to you from the most easterly province of Canada in Newfoundland and Labrador. I live on the island of Newfoundland on almost the most easterly point in, um, the, in the country of Canada, actually on an island six hours off the mainland coast of Canada, out into the Atlantic. We're so far off the mainland, in fact, that we have our own time zone. We're half an hour ahead of anywhere else in Canada. That's kind of exciting. Hi again, I uh, started taping, I taped for about a minute and a half and then my camera died because I had to, didn't have enough memory on my card. So I'm back, even though you didn't notice that there was a break because I did a wonderful job editing. Um, as I was talking about, I think I was talking about a trip to Toronto and so some of the footage that you're going to see at the beginning and the end of this podcast are going to be about um, a few of the things that we saw in Toronto when we were visiting. It was a great trip, as I mentioned. Uh, we did get stuck for an extra night, but apart from the extra 12 hours wait and getting to bed at four in the morning. Um, my parents were looking after the boys and they did a wonderful job, managed to get them to school with no problems. The boys were really, really good for them on Monday, so it all worked out. Now that and the fact that we also had a family death, unfortunately, over Christmas. My great uncle, who was 95 years old and a World War II veteran, passed away um, just after Christmas. He uh, his funeral and such were really a celebration of a life well lived. He did some wonderful things. He uh, turned 95 actually in December and earlier this fall he went out caribou hunting with um, one of my cousins and a couple of my uncles and he managed to shoot a caribou. So at 94 years old, I think his the way that he lived was the way a lot of people uh, in the world would like to have lived their life and certainly I would. So that that kind of slowed down some things and I guess changed some things for us at Christmas and though it was sad it was also I guess it was bittersweet there were some happy moments as we reminisced about some of the things that he had gotten into over his uh, lifetime so that was a lot of fun so without further ado I'm going to get into knitting content and I'm pleased to say that I have a finished object I finished this actually just coming back from our trip to Toronto on the plane just before we landed, I finished my Pure Joy shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And I know that Jenny, over at Lucky Jenny Knits, she and I were sharing. We were kind of uh, knitting this shawl together, and she's finished hers as well. So yay, Jenny, we did it. Uh, here's my shawl. I have worn it. I have been wearing it continuously ever since it was knit. So here it is. I'm going to stand up in its knitted glory. It's quite a long shawl. I haven't blocked this yet. I'll get around to blocking it soon, I'm sure. But it's just, it's stunning. And I have a feeling I will knit another one of these. I'm not going to knit another one anytime, like in the next month or so. But it was a lot of fun. I can see why people knit this one a, a few times. So that's my Pure Joy shawl, which is officially finished. The other things I want to show you, so that's my only finished object over Christmas, like I said, with uh, being a bit delayed in Toronto and then with my great uncle passing away and then with just the hub and bub and you know the busyness and joyfulness of Christmas with three boys that are under the age of 10. It was very, it was wonderfully crazy here at my house. It didn't always mean that I got a lot of knitting done but I did make some progress on a couple of things. So here are my husband's Christmas socks which didn't get finished for Christmas and that's quite okay. I have, I started these with no pattern 
And then I since um, changed over, I'm using now Susan B. Anderson's Smooth Operator Socks pattern. So this is as far as I've gotten. So you can see the white that's right here and here. Where is it? Here. I'm just starting to pick up to uh, add in my afterthought heels. So those ones are, um, I just stand up. We got a tripod. We actually got a wonderful telescope for Christmas and it came with a, um, my father-in-law gave us a tripod to go with it. So I'm using the tripod today. So the camera is actually a little further away than I'm used to. So in order to show close-ups, I feel like I should stand up and bring them forward and that's what I'm going to do. And then if I don't need to do that next week, then I won't. Anyway, so this is how these socks have turned out. I love them. I love the way that the colors are showing up. I think they're great. And they're both at about the same stage, which is nice too. So these really, once I get the heels in, there's not much more to finish on those. So I'm happy about that. The other thing that I started once I got the Pure Joy shawl finished, I would like to cast on another shawl. I also want to cast on another pair of socks. So I really need to get these ones done. I'm, I think I'm going, the next shawl I'm going to do, one of my friends in Ireland, um, hi Catherine, uh, has knit the Close to You shawl. I can't remember who it's by, but I'll put it on the screen. Uh, she's knit it several times. I want to say three or four times and has encouraged a bunch of other people to knit it as well. And some of the gift yarn that I have been, was luckily uh, very kindly given over the pad for the year 2016, I would like to knit into a shawl. And I think that that's gonna be one of the ones that I do. So I think that's gonna be my next major cast on. But prior to that, I'm trying to pull some things out of my work in progress basket. I actually have a work in progress craft room. But some of my works in progress I've got put in a basket in my living room and I'm trying to pull things out of that every now and then to finish them up. So one of the ones that I pulled out is this one. Now I'm going to have to get the paper out. It's in my Brindy Linens knitting bag. It doesn't, it's a, because it's a sweater, I really need to invest in a large sweater project bag. Um, so it barely fits anymore in that bag. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a squeeze. Oh, I don't have the, I think it's just called a short sleeve cardigan. Let's see here. It's by a crafty house knit and crochet blog. It's a short sleeve, quick knitted cardigan. That's the picture of the finished project there. And yeah, I'm going to have to move the tripod closer because this is kind of a pain to be, uh, I'm lazy. I don't want to get up every time I want to show you something. <laughs> okay, so I've taken it. It's off the needles right now. I needed to try it on for length. So it's a top down knitted cardigan. So I don't know if you can see that. I'll show you the back. I find actually that the back. So it's a seed stitch around the collar. The sleeves right now are, are um, just on waist yarn until I get back to them. And the pattern calls for a short sleeve. I'm going to try the, the length at short, a short sleeve, and if I don't like that, I'm just going to go to a three-quarter sleeve, that's similar to how um, I really love sweaters with three-quarter sleeve. So I need to knit probably another six, maybe eight inches on this. I um, the sweater pattern, as you can see, it's a little well, it's not really short on that super super slender model, but on me it is. I'm not so uh, super slender. So for mine, I'm going to knit another 68 inches, and I've got loads of yarn. This is the, oh, so many strings hanging off from the waist yarn. Woolies, so it's Lion Brand Yarns Woolies Tonal, and it is in the Royal Blue colorway. And uh, I still have two balls of this, and even though it's bulky, I think I have plenty to add six or eight inches on, and then even still have options to do a longer sleeve, so... Anyway, I, I'm enjoying this. I am. I love the color. I love the shape of the sweater. The needles, I think, are size are 11 millimeters, so they're huge and they're metal. And I usually prefer wood in my knitting. So I'm enjoying getting the sweater done. It's really neat that it knits up so quickly. But I'm not really enjoying using size 11 needles. I find them very unhandy. They're quite big and unwieldy. So uh, I'll be happy when that sweater is finished and it should be finished fairly soon because it knits up so quickly. And then I have a real burning desire to cast on another sweater. And I want to knit, I know what I want to knit. I want to knit a simple cardigan 
and I'm leaning towards uh, Holy Locatelli's Made Well cardigan. But if you have knit, that one's in fingering weight. So if you have knit a sweater in either fingering weight or worsted weight, a cardigan that was really simple, very classic looking, something that would look attractive on somebody my size, then please let me know because I'm really interested um, in those patterns. I'm actually going to be, I think, ordering some more yarn for a sweater over the next week or so. So if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. The next part of the podcast is going to be about, um, I guess, stash enhancements. I've been really lucky Canada Post before Christmas and just after Christmas was really generous with some uh, donations from people or things that I've purchased. Canada Post actually over Christmas was a bit abysmal at getting parcels here. We had several of our Christmas parcels were late this year, which were sent in plenty of time, but ended up just not getting here in time. So uh, that's unfortunate, but it doesn't matter because it just means that the Christmas season is extended. So that's really nice. So the first thing I'm going to show you is actually a collaboration between my friend Lynn over at the Sunshine and Bubblegum podcast. Hi, Lynn. And Kayleen at the um, Little Bean uh, Crochet podcast. Hi, Kayleen. And Kayleen has her yarn brand name is Little Bean Loves. So this is a collabor collaboration that they did just before Christmas. And I've got everything stuffed in this bag. I haven't taken it out because I really wanted to show it to everybody. So to start, what they did is this is one of Lynn's bags. It's so, it is so cute. Look at that. I hope you can see those mugs, the hot chocolate mugs with the marshmallows in them. It's got Lynn's cute little sunshine and bubblegum little uh, label there. It also has the cutest, and I'm not sure if this is going to show up, and if it doesn't, I'll take a picture of it afterwards. The cutest little, let's see if the camera will focus on that. It's a little sunshine with a cloud stitch marker. Isn't that gorgeous? It came with a package of hot chocolate, which Lynn, I haven't drank yet. I'm going to now because I, the, uh, I will have to take my podcast so then I can drink some. I'm all ready to knit these socks. At least I think I'm going to knit socks. I saw somebody, Kayleen had posted a pair of socks that somebody had knit out of this yarn. And I really like the way this yarn is going to shape up or um, shade up or um, come together when it is knit. And I'm actually considering making a shawl rather than socks because this is gorgeous and soft. So this is Little Bean Loves hand painted yarn. Color is Peppermint Swirl. It's a, this was a limited, so I don't know if she's going to do it again with a little mini. And I didn't realize it, but it has Stellina in it, so it's sparkly. So hopefully you can see all that gorgeousness. Yes, tripod, you will be closer to me next week. So this is her it's Sparkle Sock, 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina, and it is a Silver Stellina. This may, might be socks. It very well may be socks, but it might also be a shawl. I'm really, I'm not sure yet. So this won't be the next socks that I cast on. Or it might be, I'm not sure. Can you tell that I'm really, uh, I'm really excited. Oh, and there was one more thing. Besides the hot chocolate, there was also this gorgeous little goodie. This package, take this out. This is a stitch marker. Made in Lakeville by Landerholm, 100% locally handmade in Lakeville, Massachusetts. Fits up to a size 11, I think that must be an 11 US needle. And again, I'll take a picture of that if the camera doesn't focus in on that gorgeous little handmade glass bead. It's beautiful. So thank you so much, Lynn and Kayleen. I absolutely love this package. I was so excited when it came in the mail and that it practically killed me all Christmas to have to keep it in the bag because I really wanted to show it on the podcast before I opened it up. So now that I've showed it, I can start at it. Yay! Now everybody probably knows what pair of socks I want to cast on next. The other thing that I received was from, this is from a lady who lives in, out in British Columbia. So if anybody's not familiar with Canada, I am on the extreme east coast of Canada. British Columbia is on the extreme west coast of Canada. 
Incidentally, I am from Newfoundland and Labrador, the east coast of Canada. My husband is from Vancouver Island on the extreme west coast of Canada. Nice story about how we met. <laughs> but uh, we're now living on the east coast. And a lady that I've gotten to know, um, I guess electronically via Instagram and a little bit of Ravelry, is mainly Instagram, I think, um, is a photographer in British Columbia. And she wanted to share, she was really, really sweet and wanted to share some fiber that came from British Columbia. So she sent me this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous skein of yarn. So this is called the Colorway Spanish Coin. It's by Sweet Fiber. I hope the camera's focusing on that because it is simply gorgeous. This is Merino Twist, show it to you again. Merino Twist DK. 100% superwash merino and this is a worsted weight yarn and this is one of the yarns that has me torn between doing a fingering weight and a worsted weight sweater because I'm tempted to get more of this to make a full sweater out of because I just absolutely love it. It's soft, it's a beautiful color. I love the fact that it's worsted. I haven't um, actually purchased any worsted weighted wool in quite a while so it's just beautiful. So thank you very much. You know who you are. I'm not going to say any names on the podcast because I haven't confirmed with you whether I am allowed or not. But thank you so much for sharing this with me. I am going to knit that up into something absolutely special. Last but not least, another package came in the mail. This is from a friend of mine who lives in Winnipeg. And this, um, my friend, hi Karen, is actually, I didn't ask your permission if I could say your name, I, know I might be in trouble. Anyway, um, Karen and I go way back. We used to be, we were roommates for a year in university and she's still speaking to me. Isn't that wonderful? I am not the easiest per person to live with in the world. So I really appreciate the fact that we're still friends after living together for a year. So this parcel came and this was just a, not a, any, kind of came at Christmas, but wasn't particularly um, Merry Christmas parcel or anything. It was just because she is such a lovely person and wanted to send me yarn and I don't say no to yarn. With this package also came this cute, look at these gorgeous earrings. Isn't that cute? I'll take a picture of these as well if uh, that's not coming up. So they're little light bulb Christmas earrings. They're just beautiful. So she sent me two balls of Noro and this is, um, show you this. I don't know if there's a, I don't know if you can see all the variegation in color in that. There's purples, teals, greens, emerald green, orange, and it just says normal. Let's see. It's Hannah Bataki, Bataki, Hannah Bataki, and it is 55% wool, 35% silk and 10% mohair. It is not very mohair-ish, which is great. I'm not a big mohair fan, actually. And I would not have been able to tell there's mohair in here. But the silk has made this, I find Noro, at least the other Noro that I have, quite scratchy. And this was reputed to be for a scarf. And uh, I thought, oh, you know, Noro in a scarf, I'm not sure how that's gonna work, if that's actually going to be soft enough, but I believe that this is soft enough. And I'm not sure if I'm knitting a scarf with it or something else, but it's just gorgeous. So thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciate the, um, I really, really appreciate this present. Makes me want to go down the yarn shop now and buy some more yarn to send you. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Don't expect it anytime soon because I am terrible at getting things in the mail. I sent, I ordered Christmas cards because I always order my Christmas cards from Shutterfly and I get a picture of the boys and write a little note on the back and everything. I ordered them six weeks before Christmas, and this is just an indication of how bad our postal service has been this year. Um, I, six weeks before Christmas, I ordered my cards. They came between Christmas and New Year's, so my Christmas cards didn't get it until after New Year's this year, which is quite disappointing, but that's life. That's all you can do. The last thing I have to talk about is mine and Sandy's over at By the Lakeside podcast. Hi Sandy, I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Um, Sandy and I are hosting a crafty winter make-along, the uh, Mal, and uh, over on Ravelry. So Sandy has a Ravelry um, 
thread going for the Crafty Winter Make Along and I have a Ravelry thread and I know I haven't checked Sandy's recently but I know that my uh, the finished objects for my uh, Crafty Winter Make Along have been going wild. I think there's four or five pages of finished objects now which is wonderful. Every finished object means one more chance to win with the Make Along and each is Sandy and I are both doing prizes for that so if you Say you do two, finish two projects, and it doesn't matter what they are. I think I mentioned before on the podcast, it can be knitting, crocheting, sewing, paper crafts, uh, painting, whatever. Whatever you have finished that is fairly, not too small. So one tiny crocheted ornament wouldn't count, but if you did six or 12 of them, that would be fine. Or a little scarf would be fine, a chalette, a pair of mittens, a cowl, a hat. Um, I'm trying to think if you did two or three paper cards, uh, sewed up a project bag, all those, so things that they don't have to be that big to enter. Um, each one of those means an opportunity to win a prize, so make sure that you put your finished objects in my thread and then go over and visit Sandy and uh, post your finished objects in her um, Crafty Winter Make Long thread as well, finished object thread. And then you get a chance to win uh, from either one of us, which would be wonderful. So I want to thank you again for coming and joining me today. It has been a bit of a rush this morning between me running errands and trying to tape and then a minute and a half into, uh, into taping the podcast, having to go back downstairs and delete um, download pictures and delete a whole bunch of information off my camera because I have my camera card to full again. Um, so thank you for your patience, even though you may not have noticed that you... Uh, that this has been as busy a morning as I have noticed. And I'm looking forward to doing this again, back to doing this weekly. My podcast, usually I try to keep them around a half hour. So hopefully I have um, managed to squeeze all this content and the footage that I have into a half hour podcast. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you again next week. So if you are interested and like the podcast, it would be great if you hit the subscribe button. And if you want to leave a comment, either on YouTube or Ravelry or on Instagram, I by and large get it back to all comments, although I'm often late. So I apologize for that. But if you want to leave a comment, go ahead and I will get back to you. So take care and I hope you're having a wonderful post-holiday winter. Bye-bye.